Welcome to Missing the Mark, where we look for meaning in strange places. I'm Christopher. So I have been rather busy and uh, frankly kind of tired lately, so I haven't been making many videos. And uh, unfortunately, it's probably going to continue for uh, another week or two. I've got a lot of great topics I want to do. Um, but uh, I did want to um, take the time to uh, just make a, a quick little video because I'd heard some really interesting stories about the Greek philosopher Diogenes from some friends of mine, specifically uh, Eve Kinnine and, and Andrew Stratelites. So um, I want to just relay a few of them. It's, it's a quick thing, but it's some really interesting stuff. Uh, Diogenes of Sinope was a Cynic philosopher, the Cynics being named um, from the Greek word dog, kune. And um, it's related to the Latin word, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's either the same root or, uh, uh, of canis in, um, in Latin, from which you get the, uh, the great pun of the Dominicans. Uh, in Latin, Dominic, uh, Dominicans from the, the founder Saint Dominic, but it also sounded like the words Domini Canis, uh, Domini meaning Lord and Canis meaning hounds, uh, Lord generally referring to God. Hence, the Dominicans got the name the Hounds of God, uh, who pr pursued error. But anyway, the Greek is Cune, from which we get cynic. Um, that uh, uh, for some reason that that sound often becoming a um, a Y, uh, like the Greek word uh, Lukos, meaning wolf. And you see that in uh, lycanthrope, lycanthrope um, however you want to pronounce it, that um, the Lukos in the first meaning literally wolf man, uh, anthropos meaning man or human being, it's the, the uh, sex neutral one, and uh, Lukos meaning wolf, uh, which makes people trying to use lycanthrope as a generic term and werewolf as one specific type of shapeshifter kind of amusing. Um, really, if you're going to do that, you should use the term shapeshifter and uh, you know, because lycanthrope is just the Greek version of the, the uh, werewolf being man, uh, ver, um, which I think comes from the Latin ver, I'm not sure. But in the Old English, ver meaning man, and wolf meaning, well, wolf. Anyway, that huge digression aside, Diogenes was a cynic, and they were called dog, um, at least Diogenes was famed for being extremely ascetic. Um, uh, asceticism being uh, abstaining from bodily pleasures, having control over the body and um, exercising that so as to not need pleasures uh, of any kind. So, <clears throat> now I'm um, using notes uh, my friend Eve Kinnainen wrote up. Um, for example, Diogenes was famous that he just lived in a barrel. Um, in general, he had you know terrible clothing, you know nothing but a cloak. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. He had nothing but a cloak, a walking stick, and a bowl to drink from, which he threw away after seeing a peasant drinking from cupped hands. Um, it's also possible there's a story he owned that, that he uh, went around with a lighted lamp in the day saying that he was looking for an honest man. Um, that does imply that he owned a lamp, however, uh, or, or at least legitimately borrowed it. So, who knows. Anyway, um... He and, as my friend Eve states, Diogenes and Plato were, were what you might loosely call frenemies. That that um, Plato respected Diogenes as a philosopher, though thought his extreme asceticism was fairly insane, um, in the more metaphorical sense. Whereas um, Diogenes sort of made it almost like a life goal to torture Plato. Um, so uh, she gives the famous example. Um, Plato was uh, talking to a class of beginning students through logical exercises, and uh, he had defined a human being as a featherless biped. Diogenes hurled a live, plucked chicken through the window, yelling, here's Plato's human being. Plato, unperturbed, made a further distinction and added a featherless biped with flat nails. Um, there's another great story about when Plato was um, going to embark on a journey to Syracuse, which didn't work out very well. Um, he found Diogenes uh, at the docks washing imported lettuce, which was a very unskilled menial job. And um, so then roughly the following exchange took place. Plato saying, Oh, Diogenes, if you would but come with me to Syracuse, you would not have to wash lettuce for your living. And Diogenes responding, Oh, Plato, if you would but wash lettuce for your living, you would not have to go to Syracuse to wash the feet of a tyrant. Um, there's also a story of a famous encounter with Alexander the Great at Thebes. Um, Alexander, who is a student of Aristotle's, uh, Aristotle being Plato's student, um, most famous student, anyway, um, always honored the wise wherever he found them. In the case of Diogenes, he found him sunning himself on a rock outside the city, whereupon something like the following exchange took place. 
Alexander said, O Diogenes, I am Alexander, ruler of all the world. Ask anything you would of me, and if it is in my power, I will grant it. Diogenes replied, Move, you're blocking my sunlight. Alexander supposedly said afterwards, If I were not already Alexander, I would want to be Diogenes. Alexander the Great, there's some great stories about him, too, being very impressed with himself. Legitimately so, I mean, given his accomplish accomplishments. Anyway, and there is also um, a uh, famous story in which somebody actually got the better of Diogenes, however. And um, <coughs> Diogenes had a uh, famous run-in with a philosopher, Aristippus of Cyrene, who espoused a life of hedonism and indulgence. Um, Eve adds that Aristippus is everything that Epicurus is falsely accused of being. That is, Aristippus actually held that, that bodily pleasure, physical pleasure, is the thing that you should most pursue, that you should pursue it to the exclusion of all else, and so on. The two happened to meet in one of Athens' public bathhouses, presumably on the day of Diogenes' annual bath, and found themselves alone. Needless to say, the hyperesthetic Diogenes and the proponent of total indulgence Aristippus did not see eye to eye. On this occasion, Aristippus was the first to leave, and there were only two garments because there were only two people, Aristippus's fancy, um, expensive silk robes and Diogenes' tattered, filthy rags. So, uh, for some reason, Aristippus went and took Diogenes' tattered, filthy rags. Diogenes, finding that he had nothing to wear but Aristippus's rich, fine, beautiful silk robes, stalked out of the bathhouse naked. Whereupon Aristippus, who had been waiting for him, said, Behold, Diogenes is more vain than I am. That last one I especially love. Um, there's something very, very subtle about it. Because it's quite true that, in fact, there, there's an element of pride, and even vanity possible in asceticism. And um, it's also fascinating, a, a, uh, you know, to be in, that this observation is in the mouth of the proponent of uh, total indulgence, um, who, who nonetheless, having such a, frankly, stupid philosophy, I mean, not Aristippus, just the philosophy of total indulgence is fairly stupid. It's interesting to find that in the mouth of a man who at least is somewhat clever. So um, anyway, I, I really enjoyed those stories. I hope you do too. And uh, until next time, may you hit everything you aim at.